Hello, I've been testing a bunch of new drugstore and high-end makeup releases and have some thoughts to share with you. I applied everything to my face earlier and I'll show you those clips as we go through the video. There are so many new makeup launches lately, it can be hard to navigate. So that's what I'm here for, to hopefully help you make better buying decisions and help you decide which new makeup launches are worth your money and which aren't. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you're new. We have a lot to go through so let's go ahead and get started. A few of these products, like this first one, I've used several times. This is Estee Lauder Double Wear Smooth and Blur Primer. I've had a few of you ask me about this because you know how much I love Estee Lauder Double Wear Foundation, and I was really excited to test this out. So this is a white lotion type primer along the lines of Tatcha Silk Canvas or Hourglass Vanish Primer. It massages in like a lotion and sinks in fully. It doesn't stay sticky or tacky to the touch after it's fully massaged in. It dries down and after my skin feels nice and smooth, it's supposed to offer all day oil control and blur your skin and smooth pores and texture. Now they say because of the blurring effect, you can wear it on its own or under foundation. I don't notice such a blurring effect that I would just wear this on its own. It's not like it evens redness or anything like that. Let me know if you see something different from this footage that I haven't seen when I've used it. I've worn it under various foundations. Today I have it on under my NARS Tinted Moisturizer, which I really love and normally get a moderately long day out of. I've already had my makeup on a significant amount of time. Any day I've worn this, the laundry longevity of my foundation has increased. I would say it does an okay job of smoothing my pores and it does an okay job of oil control. I still have to blot the same amount of times that I normally have to blot when I wear the foundations I've tested it with alone. Now the one foundation I have not tested it with yet is Estee Lauder Double Wear simply because I get such good wear out of it on its own. If it does something fabulous with the performance of my Double Wear foundation, I will be sure to update you and let you know. As of now though, this is a fine primer. It's not the most smoothing and blurring or oil controlling primer out there. It's very okay for me. Let me know if you've tried this, if you've had a different experience with, with anything that I'm sharing with you today. Now this I've been really impressed with and I'm really excited about. This is the Lancome Edol Tint Liquid Eyeshadow and Eyeliner. There are seven shades. I picked up shade 02 Desert Sand. This is what's on my eyes today. So the shade I grabbed, I wouldn't wear as eyeliner. The shape of the applicator is perfect for getting into the corner of your eyes. It swipes across the lid beautifully. So I just swipe these across my lid and I kind of tap over it very lightly with my finger or a brush just to make sure the pigment is even. And I usually take them into the crease area a bit and then blend out that area to diffuse it a bit with a brush or my finger. These dry very quickly. So I recommend fully completing one eye before moving to the other. It gave me just enough time to do all the steps I just mentioned and it was pretty much set by the time I was finished blending out my crease. My lid was completely dry to the touch and what I love is that these dry down and look exactly how they do when I first apply them. They have that wet glossy look to them. They don't dry crusty and kind of crumbly looking. They don't shrivel up. If you have dry or mature lids, you know how important that is for a liquid shadow. Many of them can do that and it's not a cute look. These are really, really pretty. I'm very interested in grabbing more shades. It says they're smudge proof, sweat proof, and have up to 16 hours of wear. And I will say I have worn these without primer all day long and they have gone nowhere and they haven't creased. And I've also worn them over primer and they've looked and performed beautifully that way too, but you don't need a primer with these, which is absolutely beautiful, especially if you're in a hurry. I find it interesting that they say you can use these as eyeshadow, eyeliner, and even on your cheeks. I think these dry down way too quickly to use them on your cheeks. I would stick to eyeshadow, but I'm really, really impressed with these. Now this should have been in my latest under eye corrector roundup where I review the newest under eye correctors for dark circles. I'm not sure if it was launched at that time or if I just didn't realize it was out, but here we are. This is the Dermatology Luminous 
eye corrector with SPF 41. Now, if you haven't seen that under eye corrector video, I'll have it linked up at the corner and down in my description box with everything I'm sharing today and wearing as I always do. Most things are available through the YouTube shopping icons, but if you're not seeing something there, it's because YouTube doesn't have everything available for us to link. So check my description box because everything is always listed and linked there along with promo codes and everything you need. So there are four shades in this corrector and I got shade medium. All four shades have peach undertones to counterbalance the discoloration under your eyes. And they say that this is specifically a corrector brightener product, not a concealer. It's not intended to be a standalone concealer. Now I find I do have to press down rather gingerly or a lot can come out at once. The first time I ever used this, I applied way too much and found I just did not need that much product. A little bit goes a long way. I just applied today under this eye, a tiny, tiny dot here, here, and here and blended it out. I applied a little bit more under this eye just so you could see the difference. And then I layered another dot here. And you can see how well this corrects my under eye area. Now I do think this could be worn alone if you wanted to do so because of that peachy neutral undertone. This is an all-in-one under eye corrector that offers anti-aging ingredients, peptides, ceramides, snow mushroom. It hydrates, smooths, and helps firm your under eye area and helps with fine lines. And it offers a broad spectrum mineral sunscreen that's gentle enough for around your entire eye area. You can use it under your eyes as well as on your lids all the way up to your brow bone. I have very sensitive watery eyes and this has never bothered them. There's no fragrance, no alcohol, it's cruelty free. And even though it's nice and creamy and hydrating, I find that it doesn't crease up a ton right under my lash line where I'm very, very prone to creasing. I'll get a moderate amount, but not nearly as much as I would think I'd get from such a hydrating product. I've tried various concealers over it and they all layer well over it. I am so glad I ordered this. I am really impressed. It reminds me of the Color Science product that I used to use a long time ago and really enjoyed, but it's less money. This is one of my favorite products that I've tried this month. The others that I'm loving a ton are not in this particular video. You'll have to stay tuned for those, but this is really good. I have two drugstore lash products I'm going to talk about together together because I demonstrated them together today, but I have used them separately. So first we have the Essence Curl Fixing Lash Base and we have e.l.f. Lash Extender Mascara. I picked it up in brown. So Essence Curl Fixing Lash Base is basically a lash primer that's supposed to give you extra length and volume. You apply it after you curl your lashes. It's supposed to lock that curl in and of course before you apply mascara. And as you can see, the wand is very thin and slightly curved. Now, every time I've used this, I thought it was just clear because I can never see it on my lashes, but it's not. There is a slight kind of um, grayish tint to it. Now, I have pretty invisible lashes before mascara and before curling them, but even after curling them, they're still pretty invisible because they're thin and they're light. And they're still invisible after applying this because I just don't notice a lot of length or volume, but it does hold my curl. One thing that I notice with this is that if I get this at the very base of my lashes, it almost feels like I have a layer of lash glue or something thing just kind of stuck there. So just be aware of that. Maybe avoid getting it that close to your lash line. Now, if I apply this under a mascara that also gives a lift or a curl, and if I'm sure to comb through that mascara before it dries, this works pretty well. But if I get distracted and I forget to comb through that mascara and it dries, it's pretty impossible. It's almost like combing through glue and lashes will rip out. I'm not sure what's in this, but it is some heavy duty sticky stuff. Now, the reason why I wanted to talk about it with this, with the e.l.f. Lash Extender Mascara, is because this is a tubing mascara, which is technically supposed to hold curls. So naturally I thought, 
these would pair together well. But for me, they don't. My curl falls. My curl falls when I use this by itself, but it still drags the curl down that's held by this. And I also find that this does kind of what the Thrive Tubing Mascara does for me. I'm one of the rare people that that mascara just doesn't work for. Kind of makes my lashes clumpy and straightens them back out. It's just not a good look. Now it is smudge and flake resistant, but it straightens my curl and just doesn't do much for me. And I find this to be the same way. So when paired together, this is pretty much a disaster. I tried combing through this after it was dry and it was a big mistake. Although it was necessary to be somewhat presentable for this video, I did need to rescue my lashes by hitting them again with the curler and applying a different mascara over them to give me some kind of volume and length. It's not looking ideal, but it's looking better than it did, but I'm not really a fan of either of these. If I want my curl held, I'll just use a light coat of a waterproof mascara. It works better for me, and I feel like it's gentler on my lashes. Merit launched their new flush balm in the shade Rouge. It's just a beautiful red that looks very intimidating, but when blended out, it's so pretty and wearable. If you have a deeper skin tone, it can be built up. It can, of course, be deeper. If you have a fairer skin tone, you can really sheer it out. If you're more light medium like I am, you can diffuse it similarly to how I did today over foundation. Before I muted it down to apply something over it that we're gonna talk about here in a second, but their flush balms are just really great compact cheek products that you can apply directly to your cheeks and blend out, or you can dip your brush into them and blend them out. And this red was missing from their line. I'm glad they added it. I just wanted to show you this shade really quickly if you haven't seen it yet, because I think red can look pretty intimidating, but this is definitely not. It's really, really beautiful and gives you just that natural flush that a lot of people are looking for, but don't realize red is what gives it to you. As soon as I saw this launch, I had to get my hands on it, but not just one. I had to get multiples. I was so, so excited about it. So Tarte extended their Maneater Cheek Plump range to include satin blush. And because of how much I love the original formula, the Blush and Glow formula, I was dying to check out this new version. So you can see the difference in the caps. The new version has an ivory cap with gold print, whereas the original is all gold. Now I have the original in peach and peach pink. I've shared these on my channel a ton. They are some of my favorite blushes of all time. And you can see there's a little bit of a sheen in here that just looks like a lit from within glow. They're very flattering. These did go viral for good reason. Sometimes I think products don't deserve to go viral, but these definitely did. These apply like a dream and wear beautifully and I kind of blur your skin. But because these have a sheen to them, I was really curious about the name satin with this new formula. Were they going to be even glowier? What's the deal? So I wanted to find a couple of shades that were as close to the pink and peachy pink that I already had to really do a comparison. So I grabbed not one, not two, not three, not four, but five shades. They're vegan and cruelty-free. And the reason why they say these are plumping is because they have coconut water, hyaluronic acid, and vitamin E to hydrate and smooth and blur and give kind of a cooling effect to your cheeks. It's nothing that tingles or burns, but I swear I do feel a little bit younger looking when I wear these because of how they seem to give kind of an airbrush effect. There are 10 shades and there was a really pretty deeper purple shade if you have deep skin tone. I think that would be stunning. I usually swipe these onto the back of my hand and then dip my brush or sponge into them and tap them, blend them out onto my cheeks and they apply like a dream, just like the originals. So I was pleasantly surprised to see that the finish of these is less glowy and luminous than the originals. So if those were too glowy for you, I think you are really going to like this formula. They apply beautifully, just like the originals, over your bare skin, over foundation, and over powder. Actually, I normally apply these over powder. I applied this over powder today, and you can see that finish. It's just 
a natural satin finish. The shade I have on is Pink Beige, and I think you can see here on the back of my hand, you have nice pigmentation, but less radiance. The word satin really threw me off here. I couldn't imagine how these would give more of a beautiful satiny glow than the original. I would say these give a natural glow, and I love them every bit as much. There's a new viral lip plumper out there from Polite Society. These are the Big Mouth Lip Plumping Oil Glosses. There are four shades. This is clear. Uh, it looks peach, but it's clear. These are vegan and cruelty free. These are lip plumpers that will give you the burn. And I'm not just talking about a tingle. I'm talking about a burn. The first time I applied this, I applied it pretty thick and they do warn you to apply it only to your lips, which I did, but the tip of my tongue just barely grazed the back of my mouth and the tip of my tongue was also burning. And that burn on my lips, my tongue lasted for a good solid hour at least. I'm not someone that loves burning, tingling lip plumpers. There is a slightly sweet scent that I swear you can almost smell that it's got something numbing in here when you smell these. Now these do feel very cushiony and smooth. They have a nice glossy finish and they're not sticky. A lot of times lip plumpers can be very sticky and these aren't, which is nice. Now today when I applied this, I went in a little bit lighter and I would say the burning lasted for maybe 45 minutes. I still can't get over how strong it is. I think this is the most burning I've had from any kind of lip plumper. I noticed way more plumping the first time I used these than this time. The first time my lips were noticeably plumper. It almost looked like I had had lip injections or something. And even the skin around my lips was red. I was FaceTiming a friend and even she noticed that my lips were red around the perimeter. And today I would say about 10 minutes after application, I started to notice the skin above my lips getting a little bit red, but I didn't notice as much of a plumping effect as I have before four probably because I applied a thinner layer. I much prefer my City Lips lip plumping glosses because they don't burn or sting and I still get a smoothness and a plumping from them both immediate and long term. I mean these are pretty much the definition of no pain no gain but it's temporary. The day where I got a lot of plumpness when I applied a lot I, I felt like my lips were back to normal within two hours and today I just really didn't notice that much plumpness. Love the Polite Society foundation but I'm not loving these. What I've had on my lips throughout this video is the Tarte Pout Clout Lip Plumping Pen in the shade Toasted. I have reapplied it a few times because I've been sipping on water and of course talking. And these give somewhat sheer color that's very moisturizing. So here is Toasted and I also have the shade Pinky Out. I swatched Toasted and Pinky Out here. And you can see me apply Pinky Out over one of the e.l.f. lip liners earlier today. I'll have the shade on screen. Now these are three in one moisturizing lip plumper gloss balm hybrids that smooth and plump and moisturize and have a cooling sensation very similar to the Tarte Maracuja Juicy Lip Plumps and they also have that kind of smushy texture. I'm not sure if you can see where Pinky Out kind of started to smush because I pressed down just a little bit too hard. You do have to use kind of a light hand when you apply these because they can kind of squish down. The Tarte does the same thing. Now one thing I want to note is that when I first got these there was kind of a layer on top, like a waxy layer that I needed to wipe off. It felt a little bit hard, but after I did that, I feel like both of them apply very smoothly and look pretty on my lips and give pretty glossy shine and sheer color. Now they say these are non-sticky, but I do feel a little bit of stickiness with these. And I think you can see that when I open and close my lips. I mean, they wear pretty decently for this type of product, probably due to the stickiness, but that stickiness also kind of dries down a little bit. These don't remind me fully of the Tarte Plump product for that reason, but I do appreciate that they note in their description that the pen is non-retractable once you click it up, it's not going back down. I wish these were a little less sticky than they are. I feel like if they were a little more cushy and juicy feeling, I would 
like these better. I don't hate them, but they're not my favorite hybrid product of this type, either drugstore or high end. And I've shared a lot of these lately. These are very okay. I have products ready for either another dupes video or a top Amazon finds video. Let me know in the comments which you want to see first and what you think of these latest makeup releases if you've tried any or if you will. And to see my reviews on some of the latest foundation releases on how they wear on mature skin, be sure to check this video out. I hope you found this helpful and enjoyable. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not already and I'll see you next time. Bye!